Well, uh, let's have a talk now to the man who was uh, standing beside uh, Vladimir Zelensky uh, sitting beside him while he was speaking in Westminster Hall and introduced him. And that is the Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hoyle MP. Good morning to you, Sir Lindsay. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, there's no doubt that this was a very significant speech. Uh, uh, this will have far-reaching implications. Before we get to that, I do want to also talk about your relationship with Vladimir Zelensky. You, there was a great warmth between you two. You've met before. This was his first trip out of Ukraine, um, uh, other than the trip to the US Congress uh, a few months ago since the invasion. But you'd met him before, and you talked about these, these chorley tea cakes that uh, you had shared with him. There were quite a lot of jokes about this. What's going on here, this relationship? It, it came in 2020, isn't it, Bonnie? You know, I was a new speaker, he was a new president, and, you know, new president coming in. We are just beginning of COVID, we didn't understand COVID. And nobody seemed to want to meet the, the president of Ukraine in those days. And I said, of course I do. I'm a new speaker, I've never had a visiting head of state. So we had afternoon tea. We provided jolly cakes for the afternoon tea. So it was me reminding him not only about the afternoon tea, but more importantly, jolly cakes. And that was the beginning of our relationship, which mattered to me. It was about establishing that very, very early in my speakership. And from then on, I've tried to ensure the plight of Ukraine has been at the forefront of Parliament during my tenure. And there is no doubt that it has been. And there was a lot of talk about it at Prime Minister's questions. And Keir Starmer, all of his questions were about, um, uh, he had six questions to the Prime Minister, all about uh, the country standing firm uh, together. There was no doubt there was a lot of love. There was a lot of admiration for uh, President Zelensky. He's a rock star leader, is he not? Everyone wants a little bit of his glory to rub off on them. Um, he made a very clear plea for the, for the UK, for the West, to send planes to fight Russia. The same one he made to, to President Macron in Paris, alongside when he met Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor as well. He'll be making the same plea in Brussels today to the European Parliament, European Council. This wasn't a surprise visit. You knew he was coming. He just wasn't able to be made public because we knew the Russians you know, could attempt to shoot him down over Ukrainian airspace. He had to get to NATO airspace to be safe before we were allowed to find out 8.30 yesterday that he was coming. Um, we would also have known, the Prime Minister would have known, President Macron, Olaf Scholz, all of us, that he was going to make that plea for jet planes. Is this about, was this, a lot of the theatre about this was actually about, I don't know, garnering public support, garnering political support for jets, fighter jets to be sent? Because this has been a debate that has been raging since the invasion on February the 24th last year about whether or not we should be sending that sort of aid. I think, I think in fairness, he also wants to remind us we're almost at 12 months into this war. People seem to forget, and this was a reminder to the UK, to Europe, to say this isn't just Ukraine's war. This is a war about sovereignty. This is a war about freedoms and democracy. And that was the key for him coming to remind the people of Europe this war is going on, an atrocious war the war of savages that has been fought by the savages of Russia and the militia that they put in there. The evilness that we're seeing, we've not seen anything like that since Bosnia and the Second World War. And I've got to say, he was quite right to say, I need more help, I need more support. I will win this war, but I can only win this war with your help. I am, look, I am very much in support of us and the West helping uh, Ukraine. I think we should have done a lot more to help before that invasion by making it clear that we would step forward. But again, this debate is raging. Now, it may not be in Parliament a lot of the time, um, um, but you know, you talk about uh, we haven't seen this sort of evilness. Well, we have. We've seen it in Chechnya. We've seen it in Syria. We didn't step in in Syria. We had dissent there. Uh, the the Labour then Labour leader Ed Miliband still on the front bench, urging uh, and organising a vote by Labour MPs against helping people in Syria. There are times we step in and times we don't step in we seem to pick and choose i'm always very worried when even though i think that we should provide those jets even though i believe we should have been given more help and we should give more help and and that the risk of not giving help is greater i'm always very worried when we have unanimity in parliament we saw that over the iraq war i remember sitting there looking as, as tony blair announced that you know 45 minutes away from you know weapons of mass destruction and and, and the document and we had it over lockdowns and covid more minor things like the Dangerous Dogs Act. When Parliament is united, Parliament doesn't discuss and debate the, 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 the real facts and the risks. We need to have a proper public debate about 
what sending fighter jets will lead to, do we not? Especially given the Russian response, the Russian embassy response to that speech yesterday and um, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak saying that he's asked the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace to to look at uh, what, what jets we can send, saying that referring to President Zelensky as a pompous, hypocritical ex-comedian on tour, but also basically saying that there would be repercussions for the UK if those jets arrived and were used against Russian forces. There is a lot of fear that this will escalate to a NATO war against with Russia. Uh, a, a lot of fear that this could escalate to World War Three. If Parliament is all united and saying, and Keir Starmer and British Snack saying we need to speak with one voice, we don't have that debate. Do you not worry about that as the Speaker of the Commons? Well, I will say we did have that debate. There is a difference here. This is Europe. This is on our doorstep. This is where the British people have opened the doors. They have welcomed and supported the plight of Ukraine. This is about the invasion of a sovereign territory. This is about Europe. Who is next? Who? This is a challenge to the NATO borders. But of course, as you well know, Julie, as Speaker of the House, I hold my neutrality. Yep. My neutrality is there to ensure which we did. We have had many debates on Ukraine, and that is the key to it. And may we continue to do that. The threats about every time that we offer arms, whether whether it was to actually send tanks, we saw the threats, we would regret this, we will be smashed, you name it. These continuous threats from Russia. But when you have such a serious aggressor, do you stand back or do you do something about it? That was Parliament's decision to do something. And I think the great thing is, and I think you're absolutely right, it is important about unity. And the unity from every political party that was there yesterday, Prime Ministers, former Prime Ministers, MPs, Cabinet Ministers, Shadow Cabinet Ministers, they were at war. They were in awe of the bravery of the President of Ukraine, who came to speak to both House and Westminster Hall, and the fact that he was requesting that will be a decision that will be taken. That is the key. But at the moment, this was about him coming here, reminding us of a war, an evil war, a very, very evil war. And what we've got to do is listen and take the decisions. But what I can say from my point of view, everybody was in awe of a brave man that came to tell us about the suffering of his people and his country. Well, indeed. Um, and again, there have been some, some snide remarks online, especially as you went on to meet the King afterwards. He arrives, you there you are, and you're, you're dashing uh, in full uh, official regalia. Uh, uh, the King, obviously, later in the palace uh, in, in a suit. And there he is in his sort of, I suppose you could say, army fatigues. Um, uh, this was mocked by, by the <laughs> Russians. That's my, that, that is my standard. That is not the full regalia. Oh, no, I know you're right. I've seen a lot. Yes. I've been covered in gold and a big outfit. <laughs> you, that's what you wear on a Saturday night with, with Mrs. Hoyle. <laughs> but <laughs> I've even got my tails on, especially for you today. <laughs> but, but there's been some sort of mockery. Well, doesn't the man own a suit? But that, that's the message he's trying to send, isn't it? And that is, but he is, look, he is an actor. That was his training originally. He, he is, a, he is, a, he is a, a, a general leading forces. He wants to make it clear, I'm, I'm not like you. I'm not wearing a suit. It isn't politics as usual. It's not business as usual for me. I'm a... I'm a war leader. I'm leading my country in war. That's a very clear message he wants to send with the theatre of what he's wearing. Of course. He was expressing his plight. And he was saying, I am on the front line. He didn't run to a neutral country and try and operate a government somewhere else remotely. He is there. He is facing daily missiles coming in, attacks of different parts of Ukraine. He is trying to govern within the country that is constantly under attack that it's been invaded. And that's the key thing. He didn't want to be invaded. He wanted peace. It is Russia who is the aggressor. We mustn't lose. This is a sovereign country that has got a democratic mandate to govern their own country. And the fact is we have an aggressor like Russia. The problem is with aggressors. We've seen it in the Second World War. When do they stop? That's why this is a line for us all. This is the line in the sand. Will it be Poland? Who would it be next? I want peace. We all want peace. And I would say to the Russian people, I don't want to see anybody losing their life. And that's the key to it. But unfortunately, 
Russia need to go back and retreat from somebody else's sovereign country. Uh, yeah. And that's I, as simple as that. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, I have to say, that is how I view it as well. Can I ask you also about that helmet you've got with you? You're sitting in your offices there. This is the helmet that was given to you by President Zelensky in that address. Um, and it belonged to a fighter pilot. Tell us a bit more about it. Well, I, I was very, very moved um, when he said, uh, I've got a white helmet. Um, I wasn't quite sure. And of course, this is the helmet of the Gulls pilot, the one that has, Russia has been trying to shoot down. He is their ace pilot, and it's been signed, and they put a very clear message on here. And they wanted to present that to them. And to receive this gift, I'm going to say, is very moving, very emotional, a reminder, and quite rightly, this was a reminder, we need more help, we need more support. And that's what the helmet is all about. OK, just finally, you, you talked about, you joked about, as did he, having tea. Um, I mentioned earlier you gave him a Chorley cake. You, re you represent, of course, the seat of, of Chorley. Uh, as you were a Labour MP, obviously, until becoming Speaker of the House. We've got a picture of a Chorley cake. A lot of people wouldn't know what they are. It, um, it's, sort of, it's sort of pastry, is it, with a or biscuit with, with, with raisins in? Is that right? No, no, no? It, 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 it's pastry. You're absolutely right. Rolled out. It's got fruit inside it. And you butter them. That's the secret. They will be dry. But you put the butter on, they are amazing. It's, it's the, and, and what, did he, what did he make of this offering of our finest British cuisine when he came to visit you? <laughs> it wasn't the only thing we gave him, but we had to make sure there's a message from Charlie. Of course... He was in awe of Charlie Gates. <laughs> of course he was. Sir Lindsay Hoyle, it's always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much indeed, Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, MP.